Hey everybody, Bob here. I got my co-dungeon master Bucky, or Bucky Doodles, with me for additional color commentary. We're going to try something new with this series. Um, I'm going to be running Curse of the Crimson Throne via 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons using the Discord, Fantasy Grounds, all the stuff that we normally do. But in this case, <coughs> I will also be cutting a quick after-action video that the players should not watch. If you're watching this and you're a player in this campaign, you're only cheating yourself. Stop it. Uh, but you can come back and watch it later, and maybe we'll have a good laugh about it. But um, for everybody else, you can kind of understand the thought process that's going to go into this, what it takes to be a Dungeon Master. We've got some tips, tricks, whatever. Um, just as it comes to mind, and, and I'll rattle it off. These are going to be top of mind, fresh on my mind, directly after the session each night. This one's a little bit special because this is a quick recap of session zero. We did not yet agree to stream until we finished session zero, so didn't know I would be doing this at all. But I have talked to you um, folks online about doing this series before, and I figured, well, may as well start with a fresh campaign. So here we go. Um, what are we playing? First, we're going to be playing... The Adventure Path, I got the PDF pulled up over here, Curse of the Crimson Throne, right? This is the deluxe edition of the Adventure Path. Um, it's going to take us through the high levels of 5th edition. Pathfinder, it's a minimum of level 17, um, probably more levels as you finish that last chapter. The 5th uh, edition, I'm thinking we'll probably get to 20. We'll see what we do with the milestones. Um, you know, I, I'm... So that's the other thing, <laughs> just to explain quickly. Uh, Pathfinder has its own set of rules, right? And, and they're good rules, they're, they're worth doing. It's 3.75e for this uh, Pathfinder 1e stuff. There's Pathfinder 2e, as I'm sure most of you are aware, and lighting the comments section on fire about right now, and, and we're not playing that. Um, I don't mind new systems. I'm happy to learn, teach, etc. But I have a group of players that are very satisfied with 5th edition. That's what they like. That's what they want to play. And we can do it. I've got a module for Fantasy Grounds that lets you load modules that don't match. So I can create a 5e game world in Fantasy Grounds and load the Pathfinder content into it. Got it all unlocked. It seems promising. You'll see in the stream as this airs starting Monday and consecutive Monday nights, as long as we don't have a cancellation, that, um, you know, it'll be a little rocky. I'm sure you'll see me um and awing and, and hamming for time. I'm going to try and prep as much as I can. We are doing a module with a group that probably will stay on book for most of it, so it should go fine, but we'll see. And uh, you'll hear in these after-action reports if uh, if I learn any surprises or what have you. But it's going to load the maps, uh, including the line of sight and so forth. It's going to have encounters in it to sort of give me an idea of how many monsters to put on the maps. And I'm going to have to redo the monsters with the 5th edition ones. And I'm just going to probably do like-for-like like swaps. This is going to mess with encounter scaling. But I can handle it. Okay, I've been running this game for a while. And I can pull my punches if I have to. Although I don't think I will because this is yet another big full group. One of the cool things about our Discord over at Rethink Gaming is we've got a lot of people that want to play games. So it's never hard to fill a group for a 5e game. Um, yeah, and I just wish there were more nights in the week because I would keep doing it if I can. We're looking for Dungeon Masters to help share the load and run the additional groups throughout the week. So if you're interested, let me know. It, and this applies to my players as well who might be watching this from other groups or the group that, that this is about later. But they all know this because I'm constantly trying to recruit <coughs> somebody to, to come in and use our server and our stuff. Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. So anyway, um, it's going to be a learning experience. And I'm looking forward to it a little bit. The prep for the monsters and the encounters is not going to be too dissimilar to new maps. So um, for those of you who may have seen the Tuesday night campaign, I'm doing uh, Dungeon of the Mad Mage. And the maps... Uh, in that book, the, the default maps, they're crap. They're they are um, not colored. They're not that well illustrated. They're really sort of sketches. And it's old school and whatever, but the virtual tabletop is not an old school thing. Like, we did not have that back then, right? So today we use full color maps, and thankfully the Reddit for Dungeons of the Mad Mage has them. Um, you can go get them right now. They're wonderful. They're beautiful. But bringing them into Fantasy Grounds is a ton of extra work. Uh, this 
Curse of the Crimson Throne thing that I'm trying to do will probably be even easier than that. If there's any interest in how I prep for this and you want to see that on video, let me know. Maybe we'll do some of that. Just uh, comment right where you find this. Um, and I am watching live comments now, in case there are any. It's late. This was unannounced. It's a little bit by surprise, so I'm not expecting any. But if it pops up um, and I see it, I'll respond. If it pops up and I don't see it, I'll, I'll comment back to you after. Um, all right, so that's what we're going to do. Curse of the Crimson Throne, using 5th edition rules in Fantasy Grounds, adapting on the fly as we go. I'll let you know how it goes here. Uh, so the group, this is the Monday night group. Monday night did not stream, uh, except for when Paul wanted to stream on his Twitch. And um, that was kind of an occasional thing. Um, he's got a huge following for his uh, uh, esports stuff that he does. Amazing. I, I love to live vicariously through such a person. I have such a person in my life. I'm nowhere near, nowhere I'll ever be anywhere near that level of skill. But... Um, Anyway, he had a Twitch following and streamed a few games out there. This time we're streaming it on the YouTube with the other stuff. Um, partially so I can do stuff like this, but so people can watch if they're interested. Uh, it should be a lot of fun. Otherwise, even if nobody watches these, they're a good memory book. If a player has to skip or miss or whatever, we've got a recording. It's very easy to go back and figure out what was missed. So that, that, that makes it simple. Um, so we got our characters loaded. Uh, images cleaned up, all the Fantasy Grounds automation tested, and we started talking through our character links. There's more to come, and I think we'll review that when we kick things off again on Monday. So um, I don't want to get in too deep there, but I will run down the characters for you real quick. We've got a half-elf rogue named Andriel Luthien. Now these are level one, so I don't know what their subclasses are going to be in most cases, and I would let them change it anyway if they had picked one um, early. But anyway, um, so we've got a half-elf rogue named Andriel. We've got a warforged ranger named Bishop. Now, warforged, and you'll find out here in a second, satyrs is probably not a great fit for Pathfinder, but that's okay. Uh, we run a very open, very permissive 5th edition game, and if I have to figure out a plot way to smooth it over, I will. If it comes up in the in the plot and is interesting for some reason, that we're just gonna let that happen. That'll just be fun. Um, you know, again, comment if you know that I'm running into a, a crevasse. I've I've not fully read the book. I'm not fully prepared yet. I'm running three games a week, so uh, you know, we'll see, right? We'll see. But um, yeah, I do have a Warforged Ranger. Uh, we've got Blunt Brannigan. Uh, it's apparently modeled after Zap Brannigan. It should be super interesting. Paul's running that one. This is a human paladin. We've got Philo Phil Julush. Julush? Julush? I don't remember how to pronounce it. The Bard. This is the same Bard that started the uh, Icewind Dale campaign. Um, just a little bit of a reboot and um, revisiting this character. Um, Phil has a different ward under his tutelage now. He'll be tutling rumble the human barbarian who's modeled after a professional wrestler they have a gym bag of holding that we negotiated and i don't want to do encumbrance we'll talk about that in a second but in this gym bag of holding is uh chairs and turnbuckles and ropes and all the stuff they need to do an impromptu uh wrestling match we'll see if it comes up in the game otherwise it's you know a little bit of free gear kind of give them a leg up head start um but yeah, Phil is coaching Rumble, the wrestler. Uh, also in that retinue is Norbert Redtoe. He is a half-elf wild magic sorcerer. Um, and in discussions with this uh, character's player, we've decided that we're going to roll wild magic, the d20, to check and see if there is a surge every spell cast with levels, just every single time. Um, I also s decided that we're going to do this for the advantage expenditure that gets recharged in, in a lot of magic sorts of stuff. Um, if that becomes too much, we'll dial it back. And, and we discussed that when we were talking through the character. Um, but we'll see. There could be quite a bit of wild magic in the, in the upcoming campaign. Um, what else? Uh, so we've also got Victor Amistragia. I don't know, Amistria, I'm, I'm butchering that. That's fine. They can pronounce it correctly when we actually stream. This is a Hexblade Warlock. Um, 
this uh, Riley's running that when he ran the Druid last time. Um, we'll see. I think this is going to be good. And he's not working from a build. He's kind of exploring his way through it, which I actually approve of and, and like. But, um, you know, it's a lot of options on a Warlock. So I could see that we wind up uh, retconning that character or readjusting it or something. Um, mark my words, that one's going to be, I think, interesting. So we had our Session Zero meeting. And for those of you who've not heard me talk about it before, uh, let me go ahead and get it on screen for you. Toss it over here. So we have a really quick sort of punch list. And let me zoom this in just a little bit so you can see it. Um, I'm going to talk about where our session zero list is at and, you know, kind of going over what's in it real quick and then the changes. So um, first thing I like to call out for my players is that these are a long-term investment. Um, it's going to take us a year to complete this one, especially this, this Paizo one is, is a thick boy. So, um, yeah, it's going to take a while to chew through. We're going to play once a week on Monday from 7 to 9-ish, right? Discord, Fantasy Grounds, all that is, is table stakes, no changes there. We've decided to wait 15 minutes to see if someone is late. So if you're waiting for the stream to start and we haven't started yet, that could be why. We don't have a full set of players ready to play on time. Um, we're busy and we're professionals and none of us are cool enough to get paid to do this as our day jobs yet. So bear with us, um, but we'll do what we can. Um, what happens if players know they should miss? Well, we've added this rule. Uh, so we changed from 10 minutes to 15 minutes in this new campaign we've also said okay we expect you to notify us if you're not going to make it um that's just courtesy but we've kind of codified it a little bit specifically because we've had some players uh, step back from the game without a lot of communication and it was it was frustrating so people decided to communicate with one another and with me and that's the whole point of session zero anyway so um it's great uh, anyway we've just kind of got this codified as an expectation there's no teeth to it and there were, but that we decided to take this back out. So it's a statement, right? But setting expectations is, is what all this is about. Uh, so then next on line eight, uh, players who know they will be late will not be counted late if they notify chat in Discord. So you are just got off work. You're going to be late to the game. You say, hey, I'm going to be there. Go ahead and start without me. We will go ahead and start without you. The expectation is you go into the Monday night channel and say, hey, um, if you want to drop out of the game, you need to talk to me. And if you miss three sessions in a row, we're going to kick you out. Um, seems pretty reasonable. We did not have that rule before. Added it. Um, because, again, you know, we had uh, some, some non-participation. Uh, let's see. So we are going to cancel if two players are absent. This one varies a little bit from group to group. Um, it becomes a matter of do you really want to tow six characters so that two of you can play, right? No. Nobody wants to do that. Um, yeah, uh, kind of enough said on that. If you want, we can do a whole video on that and kind of go in what go through what all of the options are. But basically, we have six in the group right now. I think six, yeah. Um, if four of them show up and are ready to play, we'll play. The other two will either be played by a specified player. Um, so, you know, perhaps Phil runs the wrestler that we talked about earlier because those two characters are pretty closely bonded. Um, or... They are following around but aren't doing anything. This would be especially appropriate for social encounters, shopping trips, those kinds of things. Nobody really needs to play that character if that character's not doing anything. Or they're away. They're doing something else. They're on a secret mission for the king, whatever, right? Um, I will advise on what we should do depending on you know what we expect to happen and level of risk. And that's that's all pretty standard for this group. It works reasonably well. Folks make it almost all the time, but when they can't, we've got some coverage for it. Okay, uh, the next line, we don't have any restrictions on what you eat, drink, consume, or otherwise enjoy while you're playing the game. We're all adults, right? As long as you can play, you do what you want to do. This may mean some chewing on mic and stuff, but, um, you know, we're going to allow it. Ta apologies, internet land, especially those of you that hate the sound of chewing. My wife. Um... Rulings will be made on the spot. Uh, so if you've listened to the games that I run, you kind of understand how I do this. I will look it up quickly, if I can. Um, make a ruling on the spot. Say, oh, we're going to do this for now. We'll look at it later. Um, usually I do get back 
to looking at it later. But that's how we're going to play. Player versus player will be allowed in this campaign. This is a slight change if both players agree. So we've got a double consent if they want to fight. Okay, fine. I hate player versus player fights because it's just so destructive to the overall goal. But if, if everybody's having fun, great, right? Um, I have a, a basic sort of a, a soft prohibition against using powers or skills to manipulate other characters. This, this has to do with agency. Like if you have just a super high, a plus 12 on your persuasion checks and you're rolling this against your friends to say, hey, give me all your stuff or whatever, it's not fun. It may be supportable by the rules. It may not. Depends on your point of view. But fundamentally, like, nobody wants to play that game. So we just say don't do that. Uh, this game does not require character secrets. In fact, we're going to start with most of them knowing each other um, through connections to the plot. Um, so, yeah, there are other games that require them. Icewind Dale, for example. Players will be given as much agency as possible. This is a commitment from me to the players. Um, I'm going to let you kill yourself if you want to kill yourself. I'm going to let you screw yourself over. I'm going to let you mess up the plot, and I'll I'll tap dance around it to fix it, right? I'm not going to railroad you. I'm not even going to protect you. I uh, It says down here a little bit later, but I will break the fourth wall to say, hey, you, you if, if you do this, you're screwed, right? Um, but in general, there's nothing you can't do. Nothing you can do that I haven't seen before, probably, or... If you do start to do something I've never seen before, I'll probably ask you to stop. So, um, experienced DM over here. We're going to run by the numbers. Fantasy Grounds almost forces us to, right? So there are settings I could turn on to fudge rolls and stuff, but I, I, I can't and use the automation, right? So if I want fully automated, fast, fluid uh, combat and such, I leave all that on, and that means we run by the numbers. Uh, the monsters have the hit points that they have. They either save or they don't, etc. Right, and it's it's the levers I can pull are more about things like um, monster tactics, monster numbers. You know, maybe they flee, maybe they do something dumb, um, maybe they don't strike when players are down. Right, but otherwise, it can be relatively brutal. My group actually, my uh, Wednesday night group, very cleverly backed away from a fight that probably would have killed them. And killing the party is not something I'm afraid to do, but I also see it as counterproductive simply because we got to roll new characters and start over. And I'm trying to finish these. Like, that's that's my point of prize. Like, I play these through to the end um, consistently, very consistently. So, like, I don't want to start one that I don't think we're going to finish. Um, this one is going to be TVMA. You know, we curse and stuff. It's not the Tuesday group where we're going to be blasting Europeans for no reason whatsoever. Um, but the content itself, the Paizo content is more mature for sure. Um, just always has been written that way. Rise of the Rune Lords has golden sex toys in it, for example. So, you know, TVMA, definitely the rating. We're not going to do Lines and Veils for the social contract, but I will take whispers, right? Whisper me on Discord, message me in some way, tell me that you don't want that or it wasn't appropriate, made you uncomfortable, I don't care. Right? I will fix it. I will directly take on the responsibility to fix it, just bring it to my attention, and that way you can do it privately and nobody even knows you messaged me. We're doing all official content, uh, no UA, because D&D uh, &D Beyond doesn't support it anyway, and um, it's broken, right? Uh, almost, almost always broken. So no UA, but anything official, as you saw, we've got Warforged. I've got somebody with an ember on Dragon Mark. I've got uh, uh, Seder, right? Uh, yeah. It's fair. All's fair in love and rules. We have a house rule for ranged attacks. If you fire through a square occupied by a friendly and fumble, that means roll a one, you will be asked to check again to see if you hit the friendly instead. This is really just there to make ranged characters check their line of fire. That's it. Okay, this is what I was talking about a little bit earlier. If the party is spinning their wheels, DM will break the fourth wall and give advice or prod the party with an in-game event. Um, it's more communication than anything else. If somebody said, don't ever break the fourth wall, that's not fun for me, then I would remove that, and I would just sit there and listen while they did the thing they were going to do. Um, as mentioned, Curse of the Crimson Throne with 5e rules, starting at level 1. Players have asked for a feat. I'm thinking about it. Let me give them the feat at level 3. Leveling up, we're going to do Milestone. So it's written for XP, but we're using a completely different rule system. I don't know how that's going to work. It does have level expectations. You know, the characters should be level 2 by the good time they get here. They should be level 3, excuse me, by the time they get there. So I think I'll just do that. Um, 
Hit points. We're not going to do encumbrance unless it gets ridiculous. As I said, I already gave him a bag of holding to sort of facilitate that in a in a plot sense. Um, criticals, fantasy grounds manages, so not a lot of change there. We're not enforcing alignment. Inspiration can be given out for all of the wonderful things, including players can point out. Um, and I do lo- allow a very permissive inspiration use. Fantasy grounds tells you right away if your roll succeeds or fails. So I'm going to let you use that information and then decide if you want to use inspiration just to make it a little bit more powerful. Um, so, you, so, oh, crap, I failed that save. And I will even prompt you. I'll say, hey, do you want to use your inspiration? Um, so anyway, that's all agreed to. And, yeah, we're streaming through the uh, Recent Gaming YouTube channel. And, you know, if, if people want to do their Twitch streams or whatever, we'll allow that too. All right. Um, I think that's about it. Again, Curse of the Crimson Throne. I've given the players the player's guide. This is the actual module. Module Extraordinaire. And you'll see Chapter 6 starts on page 332. So we're in for a haul on this one. This, this I think, is going to be fun. Um, and yeah, after action reports from the Dungeon Master's point of view about what went right and what didn't and so forth, they probably will be shorter videos than this one. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if you want to see any content, um, you know, if you want to see the Fantasy Grounds design or, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what you might be interested in, but uh, I did make a commitment to some people I was talking to online that I would do this from the Dungeon Master's point of view and just kind of let you know what it's like on this side of the screen so you don't have to watch the stream if you don't want to, if you just want to watch these and sort of understand what's going on, what's happening. Um, it's a stream specifically for Dungeon Masters or people interested in Dungeon Mastering. So anyway, this has been Bob from Rethink Gaming. Keep an eye on the channel. Come join the Discord. Be happy to talk to you soon. Thank you for listening to me ramble. You guys have a good night. <laughs>